All right, so in this video we're going to see how to do the project for Unit 2. And it's important that you are working with the completed project from Unit 1 for this. So make sure you've completed a project for Unit 1. Um, check the gradebook and see if you've got a good score. Then you can probably just take your existing file and go with it. Um, but check the feedback. You may need to make some corrections before you move on. Um, and you can make those and then add this onto it and then turn that in for Unit 2 and I can improve that grade uh, if you've corrected those things. Um, so at the end of project for Unit 1, we had created this histogram, or sorry, we had created this frequency distribution and relative frequency distribution. Uh, we're now going to create the histogram, which is the graph of that table. So the distribution is the table, the histogram is the graph. Uh, so we start with this uh, step one. And it says to make a frequency histogram from the distribution. So we want to make a graph from this table. And it just says for frequency, not for relative frequency. So you don't have to worry about relative. But go ahead and just select those, uh, the class and the frequency there. Um, and let's see if we can do insert. Um, and it's basically going to be a uh, column chart. I guess we could put it right here. And then we need to make some changes to it. Um, so uh, things it mentions is no gaps between the bars. And you notice that when I click on one of the bars, they are sort of all selected. And I have these toolbars up here for formatting. So design and format. And uh, let's see, where is it? Maybe it's not up there. Now we have to right click on the bar. Yeah, so if I right click on one of these bars, I get the option to format the data series. And that actually brings up a little side window here, and there's the gap width. And so then I can bring the gap width to zero. Okay, so that takes care of the gap between the bars. The other thing mentioned here is labels for the axes and a title. And I think there we want to do the design menu has add chart elements and you can add axis titles here. So the horizontal axis is going to be different for everybody. Uh, if you remember I was doing um, systolic blood pressure. But whatever your data is measuring that's what you should label on the horizontal axis. Uh, but everybody's vertical axis should be the same. It is the frequency, right? The vertical axis on a frequency histogram is the frequency. So it should be that way for you as well. Um, and then the title. So we're looking at uh, this data set. And we can just say um, frequency histogram for blood pressure. That's a decent title. Um, you know, the title really depends on the context. And since this is just for a class assignment, I mainly want to know that you can edit the title. Um, so I just call it a frequency histogram for whatever you're measuring. OK. So now we've got that. Uh, step two is to describe the distribution as symmetric, skewed left, skewed right, bimodal, or uniform, etc. cetera. Um, so you should follow one of those. And there's a document that's helpful for that. Um, it's called Model Common Shapes of Distributions. Um, so looking at this, you can actually line up which one is closest to yours. And it could be none of them. Um, there's also a bimodal, which isn't on here. That could be. And that's kind of where it has two of these um, sort of mountain type things. Um, so you can look at some other shapes and see what fits best. But uh, mine actually corresponds to skewed right. Notice with skewed left and skewed right, the direction refers to where the tail is. So skewed left is tail on the left, skewed right is tail on the right. So my tail's on the right, so this is skewed right. Uh, so we need to put this somewhere on here. Um, I guess we can just go below here.
something like that. All right, now we want to calculate a five number summary using this original column of data uh, on the same sheet, sheet three, and using Excel formulas for each of these. So five number summary. And if you remember from the reading, the five number summary, it's a little bigger, is uh, starts with the min, and then it's Q1, and then it's Q2, which is also the median, and then Q3, and then the max. And so these are formulas. We want to start them all with equals, and then they're actually all pretty easy to find in Excel. Uh, min is min, min. And then you want to go ahead and grab the column of data that you're working with. Now, it should work fine if you don't have, and if you have like a title in here, I don't I think it knows to not include that in the calculation. Let's see. And it doesn't include blank spaces, so it should be able to just grab the whole column. Yeah. And so the min is 74. Um, and when I had done my frequency histogram, I had taken this column of data and I had actually um, gone to data and I sorted it. Uh, actually, you can do that from here, right? Uh, sort smallest to largest. So uh, it's already set up that way um, for ease identifying, but still want to use these functions and formulas, even if it's easy to identify. You have to use the formula to get full credit. So there's min. For quartiles, it's uh, quartile. I still use the old fashioned one, but there are these, you can use any of them, honestly. Uh, quartile, and then you pick the numbers, and then you say which quartile, so one for quartile one. All right, so there's the first quartile, and it does have median. You can also do second quartile, those will both work. So median, and then quartile three is quartile three. And then max is, not surprisingly, max. All right, so we get the five number summary right there. All right. That is step three. All right, and then step four is to compete. Sorry, create a computer-generated box plot and paste it on the same sheet. So we need to take this data set and we need to paste it into something that'll create it. Now you can do this in Excel, but it's a lot of work, I think, and it's kind of complicated, and I don't really like the way it looks. But if I, people do it, and sometimes they do it better than I could, so feel free to try that. I am going to use this box plot generator thing because I think this thing works pretty well. So uh, we're going to put in our own data, and so we clear the data that's here. And uh, this is uh, systolic blood pressure, and then you put the data in like that. work. All right, so you, you need to do a little bit of editing. So I put the first thing in, which I didn't want, and then it does have all these in there. And you do need one per line, but it's already set up that way. I feel like there might have been some stuff at the bottom I didn't want. So just check over the data, make sure it looks OK. This can be tough for some people. Some of you have very large data sets. Um, mine's only uh, about 7,000. Huh. Well, I don't know if that's going to mess up or not. So let's just see what it looks like. It shouldn't put in those blank spaces. Um, and then we should update box plot. Uh, it says, I cannot understand your input. Hmm. OK, so there is some problem with what we have. 
And maybe it is all these blank spaces. So, I don't know if this is going to work. All right, so let's clear this out. And let's, instead of cheating the whole column, that clearly doesn't work. Uh, let's go ahead and just grab the data that we wanted. Now, I'm going to start here, and I'm going to do this, instead of doing it with a mouse, it can take kind of a while, I'm going to hold shift and do page down. And that'll still select it, but it jumps down pretty quick, right? And if you actually hold that, it'll go really fast. So it's going pretty fast, faster than I could probably do with the mouse. And then when you get sort of towards the end, have an idea of what your sample size is, you can see that it is telling me where I'm at here. Um, just go a little slower. And then you can... So that way I select exactly what I want and nothing more. And then let's copy that. And then let's paste that. All right, let's see if that works. Sorry if you wasted your time doing what I was doing earlier as well. Uh, update the bucks plot. And it's going to take a minute. And there it is. So it does take a minute to process, especially these longer data sets. And um, there's different options here for the methods on getting quartiles and getting uh, other stuff. Um, you can uncover the outliers if you want. You can click on this box. Um, it's actually not working for me, but you can do that. Um, so we want to get a picture of this, and I like the snipping tool, uh, which is available in Windows, but you can do various other ways to get this depending on what device you're at. Just look for like how to get a screenshot from wherever you're at, and I'm going to go ahead and snip this and put that right on here. Now, back on the page, there is some printing directions for how to print the box plot. So you should be able to use that as well. All right, uh, that brings us to the last part of this, where we have to go to onto a fourth sheet. So um, we want to create another sheet. And we can call this statistics, because that's what it's going to be for the most part. And we do need that column of data. So go ahead and copy and paste column with your data in it. So we don't have to refer back to that again. And, uh, and then we're going to do some of these sample statistics. So uh, I'm going to do sample size. And sample mean. And sample standard deviation. And then much like the five number summary, these need to be calculated with formulas. So we want to do equals, and then I believe it's uh, count, is how do you do the number of cells. And we can grab the whole column. It should only grab the ones that are non-empty. Right? And then sample mean is average. And same idea. And then standard deviation, I do STDEV. Uh, you can see that the newer formula is STDEV.S. You can use that. I like to use this if you have an older version of Excel or you go over to uh, OpenOffice or uh, Google Sheets. Uh, it's still going to work. So that's why I prefer to use the, the older formulas, the more compatibility. Feel free to use the new ones. So we got those statistics calculated, right? We're going to be using these a lot in unit uh, four and five of the project. We'll be using these values. All right, uh, then we use usual save this. Um, I would probably save it as a separate thing um, and then just, you know, have separate files so you have like a history of everything. Um, but it's most important that you have the newest one and then upload that. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you and then I'll see you in a video I will be creating for the project for unit four.